Hey everybody, welcome to another guide by me, Grimdark of Grimdark's Guys. And today we're going to enter the first part of the Reserve Masterclass. We're going to be looking at the spawns, each and every spawn on Reserve. The routes that I like to take based on uh, where I spawn, uh, what's safest, what's most dangerous, some of the loot that uh, is available based on which one you're at, and as well as some peak spots and some dangers to watch out for based on where you're at. It's things that are going to get you killed off spawn and how to survive them. So let's get right into it. All right, so it looks like we started at uh, train station spawn. So what I like to do, spawn here, is just go directly out over here. Loot marked. Loot this, loot that. If you have the keys, and you should get all the keys for reserve, and then when you're done with that, never run out like this, because people will come from here, and it's also very likely that someone's going to rush down fence line from tank spawns and get you right as you finish looting these two rooms. So every time you exit from here, always make sure to jump out the window, because it gives you a little bit of cover with the bushes. And if you ever need to stash gear, this is a very good place to stash gear, as not many people come back here to check this duffel. Hardly ever. Uh, but... Yeah, this spawn is kind of kind of crappy because you can only do a couple things, and you'll see a common theme with these spawns uh, when it comes to looting selection. Uh, right here, you run out as soon as you can to avoid getting rushed, and check here for intel. Intel can spawn on that desk, and then you want to run over here behind Hermetic while watching out for someone sniping you with M61 from the sniper pit. And I usually run back along here. When you run along here. Uh, usually I pause right around here to pain kill around butt crack because you have a little bit of cover and you can use audio see if anyone's up on top of the hill if you get caught without pain killing on top of these hills because uh, dome can snipe you from here from dome it can snipe you all the way over here so always be ready uh, and if someone's rushing up from heating pipe right here you may see someone if you do this at the right time uh, then you definitely don't want them to leg you on top of this hill but a couple cool things about hermetic bunker uh, you can jump off up here onto the truck and it's an easier way down you can do it on the same side too you won't break your legs uh, in case you have to do that <laughs> but basically what you want to do on this run on this spawn is go down here and start looting all these cages and then from here you decide what to do next I usually like to go back up as soon as I'm full of loot <clears throat> then I'll come back here and I'll hold this down I'll shut some of the doors maybe on the side I'm not gonna sit on and then I'll go over here and then I'll stash my bag here, and you can hold this down pretty well. A lot of people, they'll throw a grenade here first thing, so you don't want to be sitting here because you'll be dead. But if you come over here, it's very hard to get killed by, killed by a grenade, and you can even do this if you're cheeky, and you're, you're protected. So that's that spawn. All right, so we've all seen this spawn before. Uh, spawning out by the K buildings, by the Hermetic Bunkers. So a couple options. Obviously, you can run left. Let's just quickly sum that up as uh, not advised. You'll, you'll usually run into the spawn at that building scab lands right over there or get sniped from someone in medical looking out the windows at you. So what everyone does and what most people should do is head this way. Now from this way you have a couple choices. You can go left and start looting K's and I'll show you guys exactly what you want to be looking for here. I take this route and I go over here to a forklift K. I check here, water filter spawn there. And if there's nothing there like now, and I come this way. And then I check water filter spawn. It can spawn on these shelves here, sometimes on the second shelf, so I jump and check. All right. And then I come this way. And check dark technical crate here. And this one has a high chance of pulling a lot of good stuff, and there's some attachments that spawn here next to it. And then... After that, depending on what you heard, it, you can sit here and you can wait to try to pick up footsteps and pick up marked or uh, hermetic spawn as they push you or sometimes they come looking for glue heart or you can come over here <clears throat> and I like to do the uh, good old tweak jump up spot if I have a, a rifle with a uh, long range optic on it I come here and I look and I see if I can catch any runners or, or crossers but uh, yeah so that's one option and mostly every spawn on this map is going to give you two to three options of what to do. Some are safer than others, some are more dangerous, but uh, that one I'd say is the safest one for this one. So the next safest one, <coughs> or most dangerous one, however you want to put it, would be instead of jumping up here, you just do what everyone does and you, you go over here. <coughs> 
and you go and you loot underneath. Now, I, I like to do that, and then depending on what loot I get, either extract or come back up and push marked because later on if, if no one hit it then it's all yours but what another thing like people like to do is they like to jump over here and they start rushing marked if you do that it can work out especially if you have a squad size of three or more but right here you'll come up on them right here if they are fast or rushing you so just be mindful of that it can be pretty hairy coming across a team right here right in front of each other there's no cover there's just the bushes so things get weird but yeah that spawns really simple all right, and then we have this spawn. This is a spawn that people rarely start at. I think it's more like back here, but uh, this spawn is pretty shitty as well because you have to push that way, and if the spawns do something crazy, you're in incredible danger. Or you can push this way, but this is one of the spawns where uh, running straight, by the way, is just not advised. Let's just put it simply again. Uh, but if you run out this way, it's very common to run into people coming from that corner spawn over to here, or there can even be someone in here itself, which is very awkward. So keep that in mind. I would recommend pushing this way, taking control of this, listening to the map, and then deciding where to go from there, even further to the corner of the map, and then pushing in on uh, marked. Very simple spawn. All right, and here we have another notorious spawn, Scavlands. Uh, this one is very interesting. This is the best spawn if you have a long-range gun. It's the worst spawn if you have something like a vector. Because you can snipe here if you angle yourself just right. You can actually see the backside of school and stuff much easier and better in better weather conditions and with thermals. But uh, not only that, but if someone comes from the corner Ace of Bunker spawn and they rush the fence line, it's very easy to kill them right here before they can get good visibility on you. And same thing with this, you can actually snipe through this at the top of the bunkers, as well as the uh, ramps of the train station, as well as the other sniper tower, and you can even peek this a little bit if you get a cheeky angle to see if you, if you suspect someone's up there. Though shooting at it is uh, not exactly the easiest thing. Depends on what gun you have. Uh, if I spawn here, I usually wait a good couple minutes, listen to where the activity is at, and then try to push out when people are busy. Because if you do what a lot of people do, they either go out right and run over there, which risks you running to another spawn, or getting picked off from the bunkers, or they exit here and they go right for cafeteria and drop down. Uh, this is a common run people do from the beginning of the game, and it's also the most risky, because you can get picked off from over there. You can get picked off from the guy crossing from Mesa Bunker. You can get picked off from the guy that spawned over by Campfire that's now in one of these windows. So you're really just rolling the dice if you're going to make this run or not. Commonly when you're making this run, if you look left, you will see the other guy paralleling you right about here. And then if you try to go here, you guys will fight for right about here. And it's going to be 50-50 who wins, most likely, right? So just keep that in mind. I would recommend uh, playing that spawn carefully and slowly. You can use it to your advantage if you manage to get a good angle on someone and you take them out. It can make your raid in the first few minutes. All right, here we are. Ace of Bunker spawn corner, corner of the map spawn. Everyone knows this site. If you played reserve more than three times, I bet you've probably loaded in here. This is one of the most notorious spawns. I don't. I wouldn't say it's one of the worst spawns. You have like a lot of potential for profit. If, but getting out the gate is extremely important. So if you spawn in here in the beginning of the raid, you need to leave in the first 10 seconds, even before pain killing. It would be my my advice. The pain killing should be the only thing that you do before you run out. Because if you don't make it in the first 10 seconds, you're gonna get sniped probably. People that are experienced at the game will know how to target you. They go up on the hill and they wait for you. They go over there and they wait for you. They go in that window. They go in that window. They go in the gazebo, and they're gonna you're gonna get shot. So if you're late out the gate because for whatever reason, right? If you're more than 10, 20 seconds leaving, I would recommend holding it down in here until a couple minutes so that you can not be watched. Uh, let people rotate off spawn and not be looking to spawn kill anymore and then rotate out. This is a super defensive position. I've beaten five mans here by holding out because it's extremely difficult to push through that small gap when you have a million angles that you can employ that they'll never see coming, you know? It's just pretty deadly to be in here uh, and trying to push someone in here. So, <clears throat> assuming that you do make it out of the gate the right way, uh, this is the run that most commonly is done by everybody, right? You're going to go out, you're going to go straight, you're going to book it, maybe you're going to do a couple boost jumps, and you're going to go either underground or to drop down through the roof or to marked, right? So, as soon as you're making this run, you will commonly see this spawn right about here. As soon as you get here, this guy can be right about here if he's skipping marked and he goes drop down. If he's going marked, you won't see him. But there's a couple things to watch out from right here. Alright, so this is the first thing to watch out for. 
assuming that I was the guy that spawned over there, I wouldn't have to run this way, I'd just run straight here, but you can go in here, however, however way, go up here, go up three floors, or two, and right here, bada bing, bada boom. So you can see the visibility is insane. Now I can be here in the first 30 seconds, and if you're later than 10 or 20 seconds, you're now here as you're crossing and you're dead. So that's why it's important to get out the gate right away, and this is just one of psh, half a dozen spawn peak locations on that spot, which is why it's so notorious. So keep that in mind. So let's let's assume that you don't want to risk your gear in a blind 50-50 run on faith. So what do you do then if you're stuck here? Uh, well, one thing to do is to hold out in the bunker and kill the guy pushing here, looking for you. That happens fairly often. Another option is to come out, loop up. And if you do this really quick, you'll do it here before anyone is really able to see it, unless they're staring at you. And then you can kill that spawn as he crosses. And you can do that all in the first 10 seconds. You can also scope out that. If they're coming over here, they're fucked. If they're crossing over there, they're fucked. Another reason that's a bad crossing, etc., etc. <clears throat> Another thing some people do is they'll come out and they'll rush this. And this is an okay option. Um, it's a little less risky than running across the field, to be honest with you, because at least you know there's only one team that could have spawned here. But uh, some people like to rush around here. If you rush this direction, make sure you come at this angle, because the tank is going to give you some cover. If you come this angle, right about here, the window can see you. You can't see the window, though, because of the netting, but the window can see you. Right about right about here, i say, is... is fair but I mean depending on what gun and scope you have if you have a thermal you can see him over here but <clears throat> I like to come over here and then I scope shit out see if they're up top some people go up top and they camp some people go here see if the doors open come over here scope out the window and I'm scoping up a move up and push in clear out uh, so that's the right way to go about it and there will often be people there hiding <clears throat> all right here we are another notorious spawn backside of black pond so the best thing to do in my opinion is to run this way because this way gives you a little bit of cover from the assholes looking to kill you off spawn. And you can even, sometimes I run this way, bada bing, bada boom. Or I go and I try to kill the corner bunker spawn from the other spot I showed you. But if you go this way, pretty good. Cool marks. Always check this side, then push this side, close the door, check the closet, hit the marks. Okay, so very simple stuff. There's not too much you can do on this spawn besides that. Uh, pushing drop down is going to get you into some PvP. You're definitely going to encounter the spawn if there is one. And pushing left on dome is an option as well, but if they rush down, you're going to meet a team uh, right about there. So that's up to you. Not a lot to do with that spawn. Uh, going marked room underground is probably your best bet. Now, this spawn on the backside of White Pond is rarer, but it happens. And uh, there's two things you can do here, of course, as, as always. Uh, I like to sometimes, <clears throat> if I think the raid's going to be really, really sweaty, I come up here, go up to the third floor. My god, there we go. This one? Yeah, this one. Uh, so this one, you recognize it from the netting, it's the only floor of netting. This one has dirty sniper angles on everything. Everything. And it's really, really good if you have some sort of fucking marksman rifle. Uh, there's a lot of cheeky angles. A lot of cheeky angles. So this is a good spot to start playing out defensive, uh, defensively. And this building in general is less traffic than almost all the other ones. And it's a good place to bunker down. But if you're make, walking on wood over here, you can actually hear it and vice versa all the way over there. So keep that in mind. Uh, the roof is good too, but it's sketchy because you can get shot from dome. But say you don't want to make this run, then what I would do instead is cut across uh, the corner here. And I go this way. And you're going to contest marked room. So the guy might be here, but by the time you make it here, he's already like going inside. So I look here for him. I look for him basically going in the other side or being right here. And sometimes I'll go in the front because the jump up is obvious and you don't want to get stuck in that window. And then you can test marked. And that's really the only two options off the spawn that I would recommend. Uh, except going up dome and contesting up there, but that's pretty sketchy because they hear you coming. All right, and another notorious spawn. I guess they all are fairly notorious, to be honest with you. So dome spawn. Dome spawn, you want to run this way, and you want to have all the keys. This whole guide is with all the keys in mind. If you're playing reserve and you're serious about it, you need to get all the keys. That's how you make the most money. So come here, loot this, loot this, close the doors behind you. And I'll get to that. I'll get to Y in a second. Run over here. Check intel. Oh, 
unlock room for intel, unlock room for intel, electronic loot. And I usually skip this, but there's two toolboxes in there that you can loot, and there's never anything else. And after you do that, you can do this, you can go up third. Nothing usually worth of looting in that room. But out here, possible until spawn on couch. Now after you're done with that, this is why this spawn is one of the best, in my opinion, though. So, when you spawn on dome, you can make it down to D2 faster than anybody else, unless the underground spawn, if there is one, manages to rush it at the same time, right at the, right at the start of the raid. So that's why you don't want to spend a lot of time looting these, only hit the safes, and that's why you shut the door behind you. Because you're going to go down, and then you're going to come back up, depending on how things are. And with all the doors shut, you'll be able to tell if someone has rushed up here and is looting behind you. Uh, that door is not important to close behind you, but I'll show you exactly what I mean why. So I do this. If you go to this hole here, then if you drop down and you just have your feet hit the railing, you'll be fine. Otherwise, if you miss the railing though, you will fall to your death, but that's how you do that trick. And I sprint down here. There's never any point to walking down these stairs because they can hear you coming, so you might as well just get over it with quickly. Over here, magazines can spawn, some attachments, and over here, electronic loot can spawn rarely on top of that, like military cables and stuff. Water fuel filter can spawn here, rarely. And now, uh, you're here, right? So, this whole run takes about one minute to do, and then you can start checking ASA. Check for ACEs, come back here, check for intel, check for intel, check for intel on top of the safe, loot the safe, up over this. Alright, check for intel. Come down here. Grab electronic loot. And I usually skip looting all these because what you want to check is this. <clears throat> Come back here. And now look, if it's dark like this, no one's hit the power. If it's on, someone hit the power and they spawned underground. If no one hit the power, what I do is I rush underground, and I go and I get all the intel, and I go and check the water fuel filters in the, in the wooden walkway. But if the power is on, then what I do is I rush out here, and I check this real quick for filters, and then I come back and I make everything look like no one was ever here, and I go back up to dome, and I go from, and I go from there, excuse me. So, yep, that's this whole run kind of started, but that's what I do for dome spawn 99% of the time. I'm going to show you the other options. All right, so you come back to the surface, check that all the doors are closed. If they are, then no one came, right? Now, not only can you do this part at the beginning of the run, but now you want to decide for yourself how much risk you want to take, right? So you can go left and check RBST. That's the risky move because of so many sniper angles. Or you can go right, follow the mountain path, and then start white pond, black pond, looting there and contesting the rooms, checking out if uh, they're already hit or not, and coming to clean up. Uh, I prefer going this way, it's much safer. It just starting white pond, especially you can get audio on what's going on around over there that you might miss while you're underground. But RBSC can be good if you're feeling confident. All right, imagine you, you spawned long garage that you had the misfortune to end up here. Well, what you want to do is leave immediately. I don't hang out and search those jackets. All that loot can come back, you can come back for later when you are done getting the high value loot and you're not in the risk anymore by hanging out the spawn. So you come here, you loot RBST. I come here, blah, 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 I check. OFCs, ACEs. This offline raid is making things look real bad. Oh, here's one. Yeah, so there you go, 300k. All right, nothing else is worth looting. You can always come back for it because what you want to do is you want to get into White Knight ASAP. So you rush White Knight after that. White Knight, check for OOZ. Get up here quick in case someone rush second floor so they don't have time to fucking kill you. Come up here, check for ASA, check for Intel. And this is the only smart route, in my opinion, from there, because Black Knight is an option. It has less loot. There's no ASA or Intel spawn. Well, there is Intel spawn, but this one is pretty consistent. Uh, running that way is going to meet you in another spawn, probably get you killed or sniped. Running up dome, you're going to get sniped from dome. Going the other way, you're going to get sniped from dome. So this is the only path that I would recommend from uh, yellow garage spawn or yellow whatever spawn. All right. 
Another notorious... No, I'm just kidding. I'm just gonna stop saying that. Alright, so you spawned here, right? We all know this. We all know this beautiful view. There's two options. One is to rush mark. People will be expecting that. And that's uh, that about sums that up. Make sure you get creative. Or you run the other route that everybody goes. If you run this route out the gate, Dome isn't going to have time to set up on you unless he's um, mega determined. And he uh, prioritizes that first thing. So, otherwise you come through here, you go along the fence line, you go around the back, you go through the hole, you go RBSC, and then you follow the yellow garage loop route, basically. And then from there, you got to decide what to do. I don't like these spawns because after you loot rbsc and white knight you're kind of out of options and you have to take a huge risky run to get wherever you want to just try to loot next but it is what it is all right imagine you spawned here oh boy that sucks this is one of the worst so you can either push marked i'm pretty sure when you spawn here someone spawns on top of the bunker though so this doesn't mean that you're guaranteed the marked loot uh, FYI. But what I normally do if I'm not looking to 50-50 my PvP chances is I run this way. Yeah, but even this is a sketch because someone over there can kill you. Someone over there can kill you. And this guy especially always tries to kill you, it seems like. So, but you can you can kill him back. You gotta watch out for people. It's, it's best never to make this part of the run because you'll always be able to see people right here usually. So I, I typically just mind my own business and I go down and I follow this underground, hit underground cages. Uh, usually when you spawn on this side, underground cages is also going to have another team potentially going for it. So keep that in mind. You may have to contest it, but there's really no other good options here. And it's honestly one of just the worst places, in my opinion. You're surrounded on all sides and you have no loot that's in your area. that you, you, That's not going to be contested, so have fun with that. All right, and then we have this spawn, Metal Shed Spawn. You usually start right about here. Now what do you do? The couple options. You go into Black Knight, hold it down, loot it up. That's cool, I guess. Whatever. You can go around RBST. You're probably going to get sniped. Or you can do what I like to do, which is a couple things, right? So either I go this way, I go in here, and I start looting garage, and I kill whoever comes. So usually the first one in there. That's neato. But this is a cool trick I like that I think can net a lot of people a lot of kills. Now, you can also go up metal stairs, go up here, and shoot the spawns coming in, but I like this. Watch this. So if you make this run right off the bat, you'll be the first here. And now you can come, you can kill this spawn. You can kill this guy. You can kill this guy if he fucks up his route. And anyone else that's stupid, especially if they rush drop down and they're careless about how they go about it. Uh... So that's a neato trick. Watch out for that, too. <laughs> All right. And now uh, what I believe to be the last spawn, as far as I can remember, at least the last one I'll be covering, is uh, Underground White Pawn. Everyone recognizes it. It's actually, like, right over here that you spawn. And you look around, you load, and you look around, and you're like, wait, there's nowhere to go but one way, right? So I like to do this. This is what I would recommend. I go down here. I go down the stairs. And there's two options from here. You can go right. And you can contest marked run, which is right up there, and then get it real quick, come back down. Or you can just rush the crap out of this and get the raiders and the intel. So obviously you come back here, you hit power, the raiders spawn or not, you deal with them or not. And that's the start of your raid. And then from there the world's your oyster, because you can go up into any of the other buildings. Alright guys, well thanks for watching. This was just a quick video. Uh, hopefully you learned something. Uh, this is just going to be the first part of many. Certainly all things about reserve next is going to be uh, each building individually. It's going to cover the jump out spots, the flanks, as well as the loot, and what kind of routes you should take through them. So stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Catch you next time.